Hey, GM, everyone. I uh, got a great show for you this morning. Uh, we got the Rat Pack. We got Boop and Blue, Metamunk and Red. We're going to go over kind of a, the Noundation updates. It's, it's undergoing some changes here. Uh, we're also going to work on maybe uh, some of the nouns that game front end. We got Index. We got Boop. We got Metamunk. We're going to get started right after this. Hey, GM, everyone. GM, index card. GM, uh, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Um, and I we are, we are honored to be joined by our Rat Pack friends, Boop, GM. GM, GM. How's it going, guys? Hey, awesome. everyone. Meta Monk, GM. Got the R and the, R and the B there. No G yet. Um, hey, you guys, uh, we had been kind of jamming in uh, Discord, just kind of DMs about kind of the Noundation. Uh, it's, it's always been one of my favorite sites in the Nouniverse, and it's kind of undergoing some changes. We got a new a new blue color. We got a bunch of new content here. And so, yeah, I wanted to kind of go over that stuff with you and talk about what y'all are doing. Sweet. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, one of the things that MetaMonk and I have been kind of heads down working on is a little bit of a refresh for Noundation. Um, initially, we we you know got funded to create uh, an icon set that would be uh, like a Noundish icon set that would kind of fit in with um, more so a Noundish style guide, which was kind of our our larger vision. Um, and so this refresh this brand refresh i think is a little bit of a shift in perspective and i think um while we will still have a lot of the elements of the like a nounish style guide and include different styles um how anyone can kind of take these elements and create a nounish front end interface um we're really we're really changing the perspective a little bit to be more um more broader in the sense that we want to highlight resources and individuals that are building out foundational pieces of Web3. Um, so one of the things that you'll notice, uh, this page that you're on, this is what we're calling uh, just pages, just like foundation pages. But essentially, it's a collection and index of um, curated websites um, in Web3 specifically. So as a designer myself, um, one of the first steps in my process is to look at pieces of inspiration, um, whether that's on Dribbble or um, you know other website aggregation sites. And I didn't find any examples that were specifically catered towards Web3. So this is a collection of um, you know, a bunch of different websites that we thought were some of the best ones in Web3. And that's kind of the only ones that we're going to be highlighting here. And this will be updated every week. Um, and again, it's just another piece, I think, um, that can help builders uh, get inspired, see see other websites in Web3 um, that are kind of crypto adjacent as well, and look at them as bits of inspiration to kind of pull into their designs. Um, one of the things that is super exciting about Web3 to me is that uh, I think the web design game especially has been super elevated. Not only does a website do a lot to represent your community, but Web3 websites in particular, they are very unique and they're more, uh, they mo lean more into being an experience than just a website. So uh, I, I found um, myself to be very impressed with a lot of the, the web designs that are going on currently. But 
yeah, MetaMonk, you, uh, do you want to add anything to that in terms of kind of the, the vision for Navigation uh, XYZ? Yeah, I think overall, I think there's been a fundamental shift in sort of how we um, see us like positioned in the ecosystem. Uh, because a lot of what we do now, I think, um, at, at its core is simply to um, simply to accelerate the, the rate of, I guess, uh, mass, mass adoption into the blockchain via uh, experiences and um, uh, places of, of, of that are adding value like this one. Um, and so for, for, for Foundation specifically, uh, we want to pretty much um, onboard designers and developers from, I guess, for lack of a better term, from Web 2 to Web 3 um, by providing them with, with tools, resources, and, um, and, and places to actually um, sort of get a, a start. And, and we thought a great way for people to enter the space would be through the Nouns ecosystem. And so a lot of what we do now, I guess, would be to um, would be to keep that in mind and, and really, um, yeah, uh, curate and, and build resources and experiences, uh, for people to get, get their start in the space. Um, and I think, uh, the nouns ecosystem has a lot of like really interesting sort of mechanisms, uh, features, um, governance structures, a lot of, uh, really dense, uh, yet, uh, of, of, of a variety of things that people can really uh, dig really deep into um, to really get a, a taste for uh, what Web3 uh, is and, and can be. Yeah, I, I think a lot of, especially what, what um, Lil Panda U and Index Card are, are doing, right? Of like um, this, this idea of playing nouns. Um, I think for us, like that was a... a a good way to look at things and so yeah we want people to learn web3 by you know by participating through nouns or or through a nounish lens and we feel like a lot of those aspects are great at onboarding people um into this space let's go <laughs> nice yeah i, I gotta sign up too I, I haven't signed up yet <clears throat> yeah um what would be most helpful in terms of what you're looking for from us about this this kind of refresh? Where do you want to take this? I, I think um, I think for for me at least, it would be something along the lines of uh, if you notice, like just even on the homepage, right? We have a sort of uh, dichotomy between uh, what our sort of general Web three sort of um, resources, um, and perhaps something that's a little bit more, uh, and then, and as, as opposed to something a little bit more nounish in general. So, um, so it, at the top of the homepage, you'll see in that section, the one that you're on right there, um, yeah, is more of a, a featuring just web three in general. Um, and a lot of things that I think we'll be adding there, uh, would be sort of those things that um, that are specifically uh, catered towards um, perhaps uh, targeting specific groups of people, not necessarily a specific community or uh, brand. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's just more general tools uh, such as the the Web three uh, pages um, and and other resources uh, like that. And uh, we'll, we have a couple things in the pipeline. Um, that we're we're going to be releasing out soon as well, um, but then uh, towards the bottom of the page you have uh, something, um, yeah, in 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 um, that are more oriented around nouns and sort of like um, and, and sort of highlighting some of the things that um, that are noun specific. And so we have like, it, and it would be great to get like perhaps a reading of like. A, is that sort of uh, delineation clear um, or is it confusing? And, and perhaps like just the overall positioning of, of the uh, approach we have would be a fantastic start, I think.
Yeah, it's you know I'm I'm getting my bearings because uh, there's um, there's a lot of different kinds of things in these little boxes. So if it's I don't know, it's kind of um, at least for me, it's a little bit too, not too much, but it's like it's it's a little busy for me. I've got to kind of settle into it, and the things are a little bit different. So it's like. I don't know. It's I, I gotta I gotta get used to this. I have kind of a I guess I don't know if it's a question, but um, so someone like me, um, I do have some development experience, but I've completely lost any ability. I would say so. I, I come to this page and I, I kind of marvel at these Web three pages. Is your goal to get someone like me to go from admiring these Web three pages to being able to produce one on my own? Is that kind of a correct assessment or am I a little off? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, so it's like in that case, right? It's like when you are starting out um, to create your your project, um, you know, and, and you're looking just more so for ideas because, you know, um, there's the cold start problem of like if, you, if you're starting out and you don't have a visual style or... Um, you aren't really sure about what makes a web page, web three page, like stand out. Um, this is more so a directory to use as inspiration for you to kind of pull elements from. So um, there, there's different like website aggregation um, pages. Like so there's like a website called like SAS landing pages, for example, and those only highlight, um, you know, SaaS websites. And so if you are designing a SaaS website, that if, if, if I'm designing a SaaS website, that's the first place I'll go to look specifically at this, um, this category of web design. Um, and so hopefully, yeah, hopefully people use it as a tool um, when they're creating their own websites um, to just get inspiration from those different styles and see what's see what's possible and also just to get the creative juices flowing so i do uh i do really like um like integration with nouns i actually think uh long term it's better or will be better if projects take like a nounish approach but don't directly or like over affiliate with nouns necessarily so mm -hmm. i could kind of see like a world and i think that's kind of what you're going with is that um you're looking at the bigger web three picture, we'll call it, but maybe your resources have like nounish intonations in them. Like your color palette on this page mm -hmm. right now is the nouns color palette. Uh, your icons are, are kind of nounish in a way. And I think kind of like leaning into that direction where it, it's not strictly nounish, but it has like that nounish intonation in it. I, I kind of like that, honestly. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think long-term health it's better you don't um you know attract other participants from that like kind of no nouns but um don't want to be kind of overwhelmed with noun or stuff and we know some of like that current nouns design system is a little bit weaker um mm -hmm. i don't want to say like tacky or cheesier but you know it's not some of the branding and nouns isn't the strong so like more subtle integrations i think is really good long term um if i don't know yeah. if that kind of helps at all yeah Absolutely. And, and I think that's sort of like, I, I wouldn't say like controversial take or anything, but like, it, it's something that we're, we're playing around with, right. And experimenting with, because I think overall in general, uh, nouns is sort of like, uh, this perfect storm of like innovative ideas. Like you have different mechanisms that people can get familiar with. There's governance challenges and like just a large p amount of people that are um builders as well disproportionately to like say um just the size of the community and so we think that's a really good place to um really uh, sort of like dig your teeth uh teeth in into web3 and so um because i think overall yeah we're, we're t we want to target the the more general broader web3 audiences simply because i i think we can make more of an impact um, sort of onboarding more people into the space. Uh, 
perhaps through uh, through uh, different disciplines and through different skill sets uh, rather than perhaps a specific community. So if we're targeting, say, designers, uh, we want to provide value for them in a way that is um, natural to them and it, it's something that they would uh, sort of use uh, on a daily basis. And so, um, you know, if we're able to sort of position ourselves in that way, I think we can uh, sort of accelerate the, the rate of um, mass adoption, I guess, of it in general. Yeah, I love, um, I love all these sites here. I love this curation. Um, so, um, someone comes from web two, they come to the foundation. What, um, what's kind of the path that you expect them to take here? Well, I think uh, we'll be doing a lot more sort of like SEO work in a way um, around uh, perhaps just just uh, reinforcing the idea that, uh, for example, like the the foundation pages, uh, if for just using that as an example, would be to uh, really um, really allow it to be uh, you know accessible. Um, via the web, if people are looking for Web3 sort of inspiration, um, hopefully over over uh, over time, we'll be able to establish uh, pretty good authority based on that, uh, those like type of search terms. And then from there, just, just through osmosis and through proximity, um, we're hoping that, uh, you know, people uh, stick around um, or, or just, uh, or just get familiarized with the nouns ecosystem in general. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it. the original iteration of foundation really kind of got me into design. I mean, I've talked about that here at length, um, but you guys did a great job of that, <laughs> that for me. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it, you mentioned that it was a little bit um, sort of overwhelming a little bit on the homepage. Um, like, would it be like, is it because it's all sort of uh, like locked up in a grid um, at the same time? Or is it or is it more of like the the architecture of the information? I think I mean, like, I think each of these could be like a whole section itself and so here you've got one two three four five six seven different kind of boxes of info to me it's just kind of hard for me to orient around oh uh, discord newsletter figma i mean i guess it's not that hard once i get used to it but i was just kind of saying my first reaction was it just felt like uh, a lot and then with with everything moving here i mean i like how it moves i like that there's motion and i like you know the colors it's just kind of all happening at the same time. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I feel like um, I come to this page. I mean, I've already been here, so it's hard for me to like remove myself from my prior like knowledge of the website. But it is difficult to to figure out what to click first. Mm. Um, you know, like. I think the header is really well done, like learn resources that kind of makes sense. But as far as the actual main page, I, I'm my attention, I don't know where to click right away. That would be my feedback. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm clicking to copy the noggles just for like the hell of it. Um, and I like that it's front and center, but realistically, it probably doesn't need to be um, there. Like maybe. Hey, hey, be... hey now. <laughs> I know, hey I, now. Know, I know, I know, I know. pioneered this feature live on stream. <laughs> That was the it first could, thing it, I made to port, made sure to port over. And uh, it could be, it could be maybe like off to the side somewhere, or like in the header. I don't know. Like the noggles is like the icon, and you just click or I don't know. Someone with better design sense than me, but yeah, there's like maybe a clearer path, I guess, when you get to the homepage. Um, but obviously, it's very well designed. Um, you've got a lot of resources on here. 
but I, I do agree with Panda that um, I don't really know where to click first. Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's great feedback. Yeah, yeah I think it is a little overwhelming in terms of like the tiles. Um, they all kind of like pop out at you and um, ooh. Um, so yeah, no, I definitely think we can figure out um, a better way to group the information. Um, and also I think once we have a little bit more resources, that'll be good to kind of point them to different things, especially if they're coming from, I guess, quote unquote, like a, a web to background, right? And somehow they, they get to this page, whatever funnel brings them in here, they should kind of know how to get to where, where they want to. Um, so yeah, no, that that's great feedback. Um, definitely going to continue improving the page, um, adding more features to it. Um, but yeah, we're excited to, to kind of keep iterating. Yeah. I think from like a macro sense, this direction is really strong and, and you're like going the right way. Um, but you know, iterating over time, something I probably have to learn and Panda keeps pushing me is just to like put something out there, get feedback and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I guess just seeing how your users use it and then adjusting as needed. hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I like, I like this direction from a macro sense and I hope that it does serve as kind of an onboarding tool for more people like you to enter nouns mm -hmm. in some, some way, shape or form. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like much needed announce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, one, one fun thing I did want to point out is that if you go to the, uh, the noggle bank Panda, and then if you click into any one of those actually in the little info icon, yeah, you can, uh, so if you click like the first one, uh, I'm sorry. If you click, um, man, I don't know. Um, let's see. If I you don't see click, any panda noggles here, by the way. Yeah. Say, click on the, uh, the CB ones, the CB ones. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones, if you click, uh, you can see that um, we'll pull in the person that discovered them. So these ones were posted by Gammy on Twitter the other day. Um, and so it'll link to like, it's just a nice little Easter egg to be like, oh, this person posted this, um, you know, Unicode noggles. Um, so like the original ones, those link to Matt Downey's uh, Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, this, this might be something to, 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 to change as well. I'm not sure if that's just the case, but, um, they're actually alphabetized based on the actual unit code that, <laughs> um, like the, the predominant sort of, uh, uh, in, encoding there. And so that, that's, that's probably why the, the noggles are, are pushed towards the, or the, OG knuckles are pushed towards the middle, I would say, I think, right? There they are, if you're uh, second column, go down. There you go, Matt yep. Downey. Yep. Yeah, I would probably reorder like the, the highest priority ones. That would be my my unsolicited advice, but yeah, I mean, no, that, that's... my, my favorite discovery right here are these like side profile ones. I don't know how I never saw this one before. Um, the second row, third column on the, on the main page. I don't know who came up with those, if that was you guys, but. Oh, Please. um, I think it was, uh, Chris co-created. I think okay. we should really add that attribution there. But... Yeah, these are um, cool. <laughs> um, I don't know if I don't know if uh, I don't know if he discovered them per se. I'm I'm not sure what the story was uh, behind those ones, but um, but yeah, that 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 those are the <laughs> those are the side profile noggles. 
I thought that was cool. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, perhaps like, um, yeah, outside the just the overall positioning of, I guess, the the, the site um, and sort of like what the, the mission is here. Um, like, were, was there anything like specific that um, you guys as 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 designers and as builders um, kind of have always wanted but have never seen in in the nouns ecosystem yeah i mean i want personally more content about designing that's that's what i love is i love to see designers work i love to see kind of how the the thought process you know why why you guys chose the, this kind of curation how you know sundaboop always does these just amazing backgrounds i love these grids and then there's you know, there's like a very faint kind of circular thing here. I'd love to see kind of more content about that personally, but I don't know if that's what you wanted to hear. No, that that's exactly um, uh, whether it's a tool or uh, just uh, uh, navigation wise or, you know, content wise, I think. Um, I'm in your discord, I'll say. Love that. Yeah, I'd love if there was like, I don't know, some kind of meeting with the rats or something where y'all showed stuff off or demoed something. I'd be into that. Yeah, Index, what I do you mean, think? Oh, um, go ahead, Monk, Meta Monk. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think just content wise, I think that's that's a really good way to sort of uh, scale out. And so any any of the, I guess, design sessions we have, I think would be um, sort of cool to stream as well. Um, just like kind of how how you're doing. Maybe we'll have to have a uh, just a just a preliminary uh, stream setup, you know. Uh, but I think uh, just producing content, I think, would be. Um, well, it's definitely on the table for, um, for the foundation and, um, yeah, it's just, I guess just as, just in general, I think just calibrating that towards a specific audience, I think would be, um, helpful, but, um, yeah, it's definitely in, in the cards for us as well, for sure. Uh, b bigger picture question here. Is this, uh, like the foundation for a business, maybe revenue streams or anything. Uh, what's like the long-term play? Uh, is it just a free resource that involves a lot of your time? Or are you looking to get um, something back in the end? Yeah. So that's a great question. I think, um, I, th I think our main focus is to sort of find product market fit first. Cause I think everything else sort of like stems from that. And, um, and because if it's, I'm, uh, I wouldn't say it's, um, I guess in just on, on so many levels, it's, it's not necessarily the best approach, uh, just to like, you know, get compensated for say just the work itself. Um, because I think if it's not needed, I think that's a, a bigger indicator for, for us to change what the, the product is. Right. Um, but I think over in, in the long term. I think we have a couple of different ways um, that we'd like to see sort of uh, value be driven, um, not just by, say, the nouns community or anything like that, but just in general, in, in terms of the ecosystem itself, I think uh, we want to test out a couple of different things. Uh, but in order to do so effectively, we'll sort of, um, we'll, we'll, we'll still have to sort of, um, uh, build a, a, a more, uh, a, a broader position for, uh, builders and designers and, and developers, um, in general, because I think one of the ways that we want to sort of, um, experiment with is sort of, um, uh, I guess sponsored or like, uh, paid sort of, uh, traffic towards some of these resources. That's, I mean, I, I know we want to do it obviously, you know, tastefully and in, in, 
contextually. Uh, but say uh, if it's, um, you know, like a sort of like how platforms monetize uh, boosted attention, um, I think there's some opportunities there but just to do it in like, um, I guess in, in a web three way, you know, uh, there's a couple of ways that we want to sort of go in that direction. I mean, that's one of those ways, but overall in general, if there's, if there's, if the value is there, I think, um, we want to, we want to, uh, if, if we were to so, say inject capital into this, it would, ha it would have to be sort of to amplify the value that is already there rather than sort of just, um, have a direct uh, sort of uh, exchange for just building the product itself. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of a couple of ways that we're we're sort of thinking, um, but I think overall, uh, right now the focus is simply to uh, create something that is uh, valuable for people to kind of use and and really establish that product market fit first before before um, before monetizing it in any way. Sorry about that. If it's if it's loud, I don't know if you guys can hear that. But yeah, sorry guys, uh, I'm I'm back. So um, yeah, if we yeah, I don't know if I if I missed any, any questions for me, but um, if you want to also transition into uh, kind of what your guys are, are working on with with the Nouns Game site um, or any Webflow questions, so this site was actually built uh, in Framer which is another kind of no code, uh, kind of web builder and, um, yeah, but e either one framer webflow. Great. So, um, yeah. So this whole thing was built with framer. Yes, sir. And so the original you just kind of lay it out in Figma and then you just kind of copy paste it in. Uh, yes and no. The, the Figma stuff does translate over. They have a, a plugin where you can copy your Figma, Figma layers and paste them into Framer. Um, the nice thing for me, uh, I like Framer. I feel like it's a lot more intuitive for designers specifically. And I feel like Webflow is more intuitive for developers. And it, it seems more like a lot of the, the things that I want to do um, as a designer are I'm able to do very easily uh, because they are native Framer components. Um, so things like, you know, the, the globe spinning, um, those, the glasses kind of going back and forth, like those are just native components, um, that framer allows you to copy and paste into your designs and, um, yeah, it just makes, makes little things like that easier. Um, but yeah, you can, you could create like the same fidelity websites with Webflow and framer. It's just, I think a preference. Uh, in terms of workflow. So like the first uh, foundation site .wtf, that was all in Webflow. Hmm. Yeah, so we're, yeah, to kind of loop back to the top of the conversation, you kind of started foundation as sort of alt front end components. Mm -hmm. We're kind of trying sort of to build an alt front end. Um, yeah, I'm kind of going to let Index take it from here in terms of what direction he wants to go. I know we'd love feedback just on general design stuff and i know mm -hmm. i don't know if you want to go into specific webflow things index but um take it away well now now i'm thinking i might need to try out framer because um <laughs> so i i used to build mostly on um e-commerce platforms like um shopify wasn't even that strong when i was working in development uh, mm -hmm. a lot of it was wordpress big commerce um probably forgetting a few and then we just started doing shopify when i I left that field. Uh, but with Webflow, I feel like I'm just building on like a stack of cards almost. And sometimes I feel like I'm going to look up and I'm like 70 divs deep and I don't yep. even really know where I'm at. Uh, and I'm just tweaking too many like variables that um, it just doesn't feel like right to me. So maybe I'm thinking I need to go over to Framer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you no, don't have to deal with uh, classes anymore, which is nice. That was the thing that drove me crazy was that you could have, you could change one class and break everything on your site. Um, and there was no way to, to do combined class styles. So 
Um, the other thing for me is like spacing and stuff like that. I would add certain divs or classes just to add padding. And now in Framer, you don't have to worry about having like padding. You just kind of place it where where you need it to be. It, in my opinion, it's like the ultimate WYSIWYG, you know, it's like if, if you could have an ideal canvas to translate those designs into a website, Framer is your best bet at this point. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I wish guess... I was sponsored by them, but I, I just really, really like their tool. So. so do you do work in, you work, um, how does the Figma framer like collaboration work? Is there, or are you just in framer mostly, or are you making assets in Figma, bringing them over to framer? I mean, I have no idea about framer, so I, mm -hmm. we probably shouldn't get too into it because I could yeah. probably just load up framer and dig around, but yeah, what's the yeah, flow no, for you there? No worries. Um, mostly, I mean, so everything starts in Figma, right? Just to get a, a base idea of what I want to do and what I want to um, create. Um, can we, once... uh, sorry, can we, can we get you in Figma boop? Yeah. Either I'm your here. own or you want to hop into this. I, I want uh, to just kind of give you, give you the screen and let you take over visually. I see you. Yep. I'm here. Foundation. So really, if you look at it, we have one screen that I made mm -hmm. one night. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. And then, and then I kind of hit a brick wall and didn't really know what to do. The biggest yeah. issue, I know we're jumping around a bit, but that's yeah, no kind of how I am. Um, when people see this, they think kind of more metaverse than really what our vision is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure these no code tools will allow us to build out a full version. So I, I think this is kind of like a proof of work um, or conceptual like proof here. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like if there's any like web three integration allowed or available with these tools, but this is just kind of like, I made one screen once to try and frame this as a game. I used a little bit of your infinity coin concept mm -hmm. in the background, but this is kind of what you're looking at. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, do we want to make it less metaverse -y? Do you think we just need more copy or do you think the design is metaverse -y? index i mean boop where, where would you take this um yeah i would say the first thing is that um this term is one it indicates that this is a game which metaphorically is correct and two um i don't i think people would see see the acronym and be like oh i want like what is an mmocrpg um and so I think like tying that either into in like infinite game or just saying an infinite game up here and then leading into what that is uh, might be a little bit clearer. And then with two active players, this is, this is static, right? Like this would just stay uh, two active players. Well, no, the, I mean, the, the goal long term is to have some kind of metric to track it where it kind of updates in real time based on how many mm. people are playing. Gotcha. And then how is uh, the number of players measured? Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, kind of the rough way we're thinking is you have like, I don't know, a time period, like a month or two months, and you just kind of look back and see who who's minted the infinite games nft that is still making you know contributions to the game gotcha. so are they voting are they proposing are they in prop mm -hmm. house i don't know we're gonna have to build that out okay but the purpose of an infinite game is to keep playing right so yeah nice i think um there's a few ways one is kind of like what panda said where um we're looking at kind of like metrics and nouns outside of just the treasury uh there's there's like a huge emphasis on treasury but really what keeps it going is that there's people engaging with the treasury uh mm -hmm. we're also considering maybe doing an nft mint that kind of signals you're playing um but those are two different ways but i think really um this kind of like alt front end that we're calling it focuses on aspects outside of the treasury um so that's kind of Kind of like my view that there's there's more important metrics to nouns than just the the money in the bank account yep got it 
So no, I don't this, know if you can. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Is this to so it, okay? So it's an alt front end to the nouns.wtf site. Yeah, sort of like um, so with one, prop 116 at Littles, mm -hmm. uh, we were funded to go on chain at nouns and bring an idea. And so we're working on this idea. And over the course of the last few weeks, Pan and I have been chatting and we think our prop would really be strengthened if we offered some alternative to nouns.wtf. Um, and so that's kind of how we ended up here. It's a little bit beyond maybe my technical skills to create something as intense as like a nouns.wtf. But I mm -hmm. think there's ways we can maybe work around that and still yeah. offer value. Uh, and that's kind of just what we're trying to figure out here. Yeah. Um, All right. Cool. Panda, I don't know if you have any color on that, but. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's a community. It's a community of people who are playing nouns in this way. And so, you know, we have a Discord now. It's not really any activity. But we're really building like a new frame of reference for people who want to gather and play nouns as an infinite game. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think this, uh, my, my feedback for this would be um, the sections are pretty abrupt. So if you wanted to either kind of make them, here, I'll just, um, dude, this is hilarious. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah well you know that's uh that's now 677 mm -hmm. that's the uh latest noun that little nouns bought yeah. and yeah. so we're kind of driving that we're on the journey cool yeah that's perfect yeah i was also thinking about making it into a space version like a you know the space pirate ship floating around somehow in our front end but yeah love to watch you work here boop and meta monk too feel free to jump in i um i think originally i did have s slightly different um content on the site there wasn't really much there but i had um something this is panda added this in recently to actually put content i i built that top like header roughly one night and then i kind of never never went back to it um but i think my header was like mmoc rpg with a giant question mark uh, what what is the c again on chain on chain okay yeah, like the, the idea is that Ethereum would be the game engine. Uh, the Nounders are the game devs. Uh, you know, the contracts are kind of the code and the rules of the game. And then you, you kind of role play as a noun and you can change your noun at any time. You know, you can put on a little different costume depending on what route you're taking. Um, There's and... no sign up process. The sign up process is just a new Ethereum wallet. You know, it's permissionless. Yeah, I love that. I think, I think just conceptually, it's it's uh, it's fantastic. And um, for for me, I think what I, I typically look at as far as like a game goes, um, because if if you're framing it that way, there sort of needs to be, I and mean, even 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 the the, the main nouns.wtf. I mean, there's um, there's sort of this daily event, right? The daily auction is sort of like almost like the community ritual that everyone participates in, um, in order to sort of, um, and, and there's a lot of things that happen around it, around that event that, that, that codify the sort of the, the ancillary effects of a community itself. Um, so people will, will pay attention to what's going on. Um, that signifies the entry of a new sort of uh, higher level player. Um, and, um, there's, there's sort of all these other things like, like FOMO nouns, um, nouns, uh, noun o'clock, noun square, uh, the spaces that happens they have it's So it's like a point of conversation. It's a point of like just gathering around that I think is really sort of unique about nouns in general, since it, it is a daily auction and they're, they're sort of 
the pioneers within that mechanism. Um, but in a way that uh, you see in any game, there is sort of like uh, an event stack um, that that people are able to tap into. Say you have like one one of those things is like, yeah, you have that signal of saying, hey, two, there's two active players currently playing this game. Um, I think um, if you're able to create sort of um, an event feed of, of things that are happening on chain, uh, that might be something that, uh, or just um, a, a, maybe maybe that happens in Discord, or if it happens uh, on the website itself. Um, if but if people are able to sort of see the game events that are happening, uh, I think uh, that can give them a better sense of of their own sort of uh, you know presence within the game itself. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that would sort of look like. You know, MetaMung, I, if I could jump in, I love that you went there because I have the same exact thoughts. Um, but can I kind of pitch this to you real quick to tell you how I'm thinking of the event stack? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, um, so the way I think of it is basically at any time, you know, anyone with two nouns can make a proposal on chain in a way that can totally change the game. Right. It could be like, hey, we're going to spend money, a lot of money on this or or in this case, we're going to change the quorum rules. This is Prop 282. And so the way I think of this is, all right, back at uh, block 17163196, you know, Nounlius basically called for like a game patch to change this dynamic quorum. Then what that does is that sets up like a game within nouns of all the eligible nouns. In this case, I'm, I don't know, 690 something or, yeah, probably 695 or so. Right. And then they're all kind of players that can decide, hey, do I want to go over here? Do I want to go over here? Do I want to go over here? And then this plays out over about 10 days. So what do you think of the proposals as sort of an event stack? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think um, you could definitely uh, standardize at least what that would be. Um, I think uh, I think other interfaces sort of um, play on that a little bit, just like um, like say House of Nouns. Um, they have um, you can go into the proposals a little bit deeper and then sort of have conversations around each of those as as items um, in like sort of a feed. Um, I think that's kind of cool. But as far as like, um, yeah, I think there's always going to be an element of, of say time as well. Um, so perhaps like um, you could really emphasize some of those uh, pieces of information as well. Um, if there's like, oh, 10 days left on this proposal, like here's where we're at now. Um, even just like, even just highlighting that or bubbling that up in a, in a way that is ingestible and accessible um, as an event, I think would be kind of cool. Especially if it's such a, uh, something as, as as large as a as a rule change, you know, um, in within that game. Because hmm. I think I think just proposals in general are are. are um, there's a, obviously a wide spectrum of what they are. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't know what would be considered game changes versus like um, game events. And, um, and yeah, I think, um, I think the, the beauty of nouns is that it could be anything um, as, as including uh, changes to the protocol itself or the, the, the rules of the protocol itself. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like, um, I don't know if you've ever played chess or if you've ever seen a chess kind of reenactment of a game where, you know, there's chess notation like E4, you know, move your pawn to E4. Have you ever seen a visualization where you kind of go through a game and you can go, you know, forward and backwards? Um, yeah, I mean, based... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, wrong one. Right. Um, yeah, I, I've I've seen I've seen digital versions of chess. Yeah, so kind of that 
if I mean, every nouns prop can be represented sort of that way in that kind of votes are sequential. And there's like a certain number of voters, you know, for each prop. And, you know, everyone can just make the. It's just every every voter has one move. But when they make it, how they make it, which way they make it. I feel like that's that's an that's how I want to represent nouns. But I don't know. Index card. Do you kind of not see that or you're not as into that idea? I, I, I'm into it for me. Um I'm kind of like the more pessimistic one in here, and I'm just trying to um, see how this all ties into a successful on-chain proposal. Um, right now, I think we have like a really cool, interesting idea that we need to flesh out further, and we can maybe build a little community. But for me, the leap to on-chain proposal is a little bit more challenging in my mind. Um, I don't know if you guys have any kind of input on how you think this could become something more significant than what we have right now. But that's kind of my challenge right now, framing it as like an on-chain proposal. Yeah, I, I think uh, just overall in general, I think if there was um, something that's that I try to look at are like some of the, the more, um, like a, a barometer that is indisputable. So if it's like, you know, if there, if for for someone that's looking at the prop, like what, because a lot of people will make decisions based on if there is a product market fit that um, in, in 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 whatever way, right? Um, that that serves an, a need, and there are people sort of um, already sort of participating in whatever version of that. Uh, is I think that's a really powerful signal to not only the rest of the community but to the voters themselves. Um, so I, I, I kind of try to distill it down to like what is the one thing um, that that perhaps those people may look for um, that 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 is is sort of indisputable, uh, regardless of you know um, any other factors outside of that. So if there's one thing that you could sort of demonstrate. Um, maybe not necessarily just like the tangible ROI at that moment, but at least um, one thing that uh, the prop can do uh, that is sort of uh, replicatable and and can actually you know so if you if you're uh, so you're essentially out identifying inputs versus the output. So if it's even if it's um, sort of in nascent stages, um, if there's something that you can um, sort of do uh, and in a repeatable fashion um, because because it works I think that is like those are like some of the things that I personally look for um, and I think uh, just just seeing uh, the potential scale of it down the line I think would be massive as far as like just demonstrating it and so I kind of think of it each prop as like sort of like an MVP um, and you're because you're simply demonstrating um an a a, a re replicatable value um in in i guess in a more systematized way and so if that's something that you can sort of clarify and communicate i think um that would be a massive sort of advantage uh regardless of who sees the prop itself yeah so, I mean, how do we replicate, you know, that we shared this idea with you and that it's influencing how you all are playing nouns? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Like if people are going to this and it, 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 there's traction with sort of how things are presented. Um, and even if it's like, uh even if it's a handful of people that um that do have an elevated experience playing nouns um simply by by participating in 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 the way that you sort of present information or um sort of uh add value like i think that is um you know a lot of these experiments are completely worth pursuing in my mind. 
Yep. 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 Um, awesome. We looks like we're just about running out of time. Boop, are you still there? What can you talk us through? What you what you learned? What you've been thinking about in terms of this design? Uh, yeah. I um, sorry, I was just building this in Framer, so you can kind of check out. <laughs> going I was on. I was thinking maybe that's what you're up to. <laughs> Um, and just uh, I don't know you can you know it's getting uh, like there's a lot of different ways to kind of play around with this I like the idea of like this um, background with the coins um, and seeing that in a dynamic fashion so I kind of um, if you click the link that I, uh, I posted there you can kind of see just the quick demo that I put together but um, yeah, I don't know. Essentially, it should, it's it's fun, right? And like, it, it should be uh, kind of fun. And um, you can do like different things like that, where it, it's more of like one cohesive idea, and then it feels like a like oh. like one story. So yeah, it's amazing. You're, this is you, incredible. You see how the coin <laughs> rotates? Look at yeah. this. I got to take our watermark off the coin rotates yeah so ideally for that one um i i actually wouldn't i wouldn't do that one specifically i would just for the sake of time i did that but ideally what you would have is you would create a frame of each coin kind of flipping and then you can have a little gif there so it should look like a coin is like rotating there and that should kind of indicate some sort of motion uh for the number of players maybe you can have like a, a blinking dot to kind of indicate that it's like live um yeah and, and then i think the biggest thing here would be uh like a call to action on the actual design so i think um on on figma you have a couple of things um that you know a couple of ent empty sections but once you have the content there uh i would I think just, it's, the CTA is going to be to mint the NFT. Okay. It's going to be a free NFT, but it's going to be like mint this NFT to, you know, your, your infinite gamer Jersey. Mm, got it. And then where would, um, would it just uh, link to something on Zora from here? Probably, uh, probably. for now. Yeah. I, also I do like, have a, yeah. Oh, you go, you go. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying, I, I like this, like, player select kind of view here. That's super fun. Um, this kind of style with, like, the hard outlines on your, on, like, the little index card is super dope. Uh, I like that a lot. And it reminds me of, like, looking at a character in, like, a Pokemon or Zelda game. Uh, so I think that that element is cool. Um, yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good uh, motifs and memes here that you guys can take advantage of. Uh, and then, uh, what are these guys? These are the, the players that you can mint, the Infinity players. These would kind of be like the, um, like we were trying to keep it very simple, and this would just be like your jersey that you mint, and then uh, when you go into play or like you know like an esports team, they would wear their jersey when they're playing the game. Um, mm. I, I do obviously there's a lot of directions but we were trying to keep it simple and mvp but like minting your player would be cool too i think um i guess my one big question right now is more technical but with framer uh and maybe i don't know let's skip webflow for now but with framer is it possible to do any sort of integrations like this or would we have to kind of link out to like a subdomain on our our domain or something um so the cool thing about Framer is that these are all like React components in the front end. So it's really, you could like, you could write your own React components and make it work here. So uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do is figure out how to get it to work with um, like Rainbow Kit or Connect Kit to token gate pages or have like logins of screens. I mean, you could also just like link out to Zora. Right, and I think if there's enough context on the page that when they click the button, they go to Zora, 
it's not too jarring of an experience so that they can just like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And I mint on Zora um, and then I can go back. But if you're, if you're thinking of like minting from this site, uh, I would say it's a little premature unless um, you had like a nouns builder component that you embedded here. Okay. Um, are, are you speaking more in terms of like, um, like token gating specific experiences on the site in, itself? Not in like a very long, long-term view, potentially. Like for me, the one example I always use is I delegated my littles to Panda mm -hmm. and he all of a sudden was able to submit a proposal on little nouns. And this is, this gets a little bit more metaverse -y, I guess, but, um, like the idea that he unlocked a new level in nouns because I delegated him my, my littles, uh, would be really interesting to visualize, but that's, that's oh, kind of long-term, um, and beyond my technical abilities. So, uh, but that's just like a rough concept I have in my head that I always play around with. Gotcha. So you're, you're basically just, uh, overlaying, um, different, I guess, metadata, um, or just data in general associations between different events that happen on chain. Kind of like re reskinning the contracts, I guess. I don't know, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Um, there's definitely something there, um, but I can't, I don't know if, um, if, if it necessarily, it's like reading different events on chain um, and then sort of contextualizing it. Right. Um, I don't, I don't know if that contextualization necessarily needs to live on chain per se, um, but the NFT itself can sort of uh, signify someone's participation in in that uh, in that context i think um say if like you you gamify it in a, in, in a way right um the, the the question for me i think is like how would you be able to sort of associate the ownership of of the the jersey token or the infinite token to um other things that they do within the context of uh nouns game um yeah i guess that would be more of a like a technical question but um i think i think you start out just if you mint the jersey then you're just signaling to ethereum that you're playing nouns as an infinite game and so we could even just you know that that in and of itself creates a new social graph so you could say like sh only show me votes from people who've minted this nft who are playing this infinite game, you know, that's itself like a new curation of information within nouns. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, do, do you think, um, do you think perhaps, uh, cause I, I could see people's, um, sort of, uh, wrapping their heads around the concept of nouns as a game in general. Um, is there a because i think i think infinite game is definitely like a description of what you guys are um building and developing as as an idea um but do you uh do do you think other i guess players do you think there will be some traction uh for people to actually recognize that they that it is an infinite game yes i think so i think it's going to take a while and I mean, a couple of points. One is there already are some people who use this framing. Uh, we had Will Papper on. He's, he's yeah. the one who kind of taught it to me. But there are definitely players who are already playing nouns as an infinite game. Um, but it's up to, you know, the future state of nouns, of who's playing nouns in the future, is indeterminate. And I feel like if we want to attract more infinite games oriented players, We've got to go out there and explain what it is, show how we play, and build sort of the tools and the resources um, in the community to really strengthen this this group. Yeah, I, I think that's like a, a big foundational component in terms of like why people do think it's interesting in the first place.
because whether or not they perhaps recognize it, um, it has all sort of the different hallmarks of an infinite game um, with an indeterminate amount of players, the in, a, a fluctuation of the rules and sort of, um, and, 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 the whole, and, and the whole point being um, sort of like the one a day thing is, is to keep things going, right? Um, is to, is to keep the game going. And so I think sort of, uh, like reframing, uh, I guess, reiterating that idea is, is, is super cool, I think. And that's probably the copy that should be on this website, right? It's kind of placing nouns.wtf in this infinite context. Um, but awesome. I, uh, we've got a little bit over time. Um, absolutely love you guys. Really appreciate that you were able to come. Um, before we go, I'm going to give everyone some time to close out, but, um, yeah, I want to zoom in on these beautiful little bro pro profiles here. We got Sundaboop in blue at Sundaboop on Twitter. We got at Metamonk. That's a three at M three T A M O N K. Um, yeah. Any, any other closing thoughts? Rats index. I would say, uh, oh, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I, I think yeah, you guys should check out Foundation if you're interested in the design. Uh, that could be found at foundation.xyz. Um, yeah, I think, and that they think that's sort of what we're working on now. Um, but for me, I think that's sort of our focus here. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, thanks for having us on. It's always a good time to stream with y'all. And um, let's keep jamming offline um, on some of this design stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I, I honestly, like I would recommend Framer um, if you're looking for a no-code solution, um, you know, just to experiment. And I, I found it to be helpful in our building process with Foundation um, and some of the updates and... Uh, yeah yeah this is this is really cool i think it's a great start yeah i saw you tweeted earlier about no code and i'm definitely looking for no code in my life <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i also i feel like i need like a rat gpt or something because um your like initial framer <laughs> concept this is exactly kind of like what i had in my head when i started my like little splash screen there um and so like without even saying it you kind of built it as i envisioned it Roughly, um, Rad so much GPT. appreciated. Yeah. Rad GPT, I need That's it. Great. <laughs> it's great. Well, we, we got these stages, so um, it's Mel, it's, Mel it's AI. still organic. So um, yeah, it's in, it's the preliminary stages of Rad <laughs> AI. Yes, once before we upload ourselves. The credit token system is virtual cheese, right? That's how you, that's how Rat GPT runs on. It runs Cheddar. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Ched. Cheddar. Cheddar. Yes. <laughs> the dollar sign awesome. Ched. NFA. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure having you both on. Really appreciate you both. As always, I'm sure we'll have you on again soon. But that's a wrap for this episode. Right now, let's play Lone Lambs. Thanks again for joining us. And reminder, we got a good new episode tonight. Uh, it's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, midnight UTC. Uh, we will see you all then. All right. All right. Bye. Peace. Thanks. Bye.